Yo, guys, what's up? So, we are back in Subnautica, and we have a ton of awesome stuff to look down through because lately over on uh, the uh, Twitter, Alex Rise, a conceptual content designer for Subnautica, has been spewing out information and creatures left, right, and center. Either a contract is being broken or we're allowed to see this stuff because it's mostly confirmed to be coming to the game. Anyways, this video, not gonna have any mods or anything, no mods at all, it's just gonna be purely the conceptual creatures that we have seen so far for Subnautica's Arctic DLC expansion, or the expansion, I guess, for Subnautica. The first thing I wanna get into with you guys, because there's so much stuff, the first thing I wanna get into with you is the Pinacardi. This thing had a huge overhaul. Well, at least in my mind it did. Because on the surface, I thought this would just be aquatic. I thought it would only be in oceans. I thought you would only see this thing swimming through the oceans, yada, yada, yada. It actually has a really cool beak that opens up in different ways. And overall, it looks like a cool creature. It reminds me of like a stealth jet or something. I don't know why. It just does. That's just, that's just it. But if you actually look at it, you can see right here, it actually is a creature that's more like a seal. And I say that because if you look in the top left, it is an intelligent social creature which rests above water on ice flows and hunts small prey acrobatically underwater. This thing is basically an alien seal. This thing is an alien seal and there is nothing anyone can tell me or say to me that makes me think any differently of this creature. And it is actually really adorable. I love how they've decided to go with this guy. If we look here, we can see all of the different color variants that this guy could have as well. You've got just deep undertones. You've got really rich, vibrant greens and stuff as a possibility. I don't know if all of these are potentially coming to the game or not. They might not have all of these color variants. But either way, I want to know what you guys like the most. Mine is probably the bottom left because it has those really nice blue undertones and stuff in it. I don't know. It's, it's, it's going to be that or the green one. One of the two. You guys let me know what you like most in the comment section of the video. Is it going to be concept C or B, B or A? And then we can move into the alien penguin variants where we have seen B, I think. I think B and E are the ones we've actually gotten to see as the alien penguin. And then A, C, and D, especially D and A, I, I'm sure we have not seen those yet. But these guys got their own skin touch-ups as well. And actually, there were some changes to this guy, uh, believe it or not. This guy actually has different mandibles for different concepts within the creature. Now, what do I mean? Well, you guys remember this little guy right here. He had his face open up, you know, he looked all freaky and stuff. I think this one had the baby too, or maybe it was the other one. Anyways, you move into another one and you've got this guy with like the hooks instead of the, I guess, mouthful of teeth, which I don't even know what one they're going to go with. I don't know if it's going to be teeth or the face pincers. Either way, each, each would be terrifying to see underwater first off. We're not sure what one they're going to go with. And we don't know if these, all these alien penguins here have different mouth types depending on their color. That'd be really cool. It'd be a lot of work for the devs to put in, but I mean, it would still be kind of cool to see that stuff. But either way, something that you guys have not seen or probably aren't aware of is the actual alien penguin. Now this thing, I don't even know what to think of it, to be honest. It looks like a peeper fell in some toxic waste or something. That's what it looks like to me. It has two eyes, one on either side, faces one towards the player or enemies. It has twitching antenna and it has a glowing egg chamber which retracts on land. As you can see it's standing and then it's swimming through the water and you can see the, the pink bulge or whatever. It's kind of weird. Dorsal and ventral fins provide propulsion, swims sideways relative to position on land. So more or less it's it's like a fish hybrid i wouldn't want to mess with this thing and you can see right on its mouth these two black mandibles or something here i'm willing to bet if this thing opens its mouth it's just absolutely terrifying like the other alien pengu penguins we have also seen this thing probably opens its mouth and like more teeth are there and it's just there to give you a bad time it looked kind of cute and harmless kind of almost like a, a jellyfish type of look but then uh, yeah, I don't. I think the trade-off of that stop-looking skin is gonna be it's a glass cannon. That might be. That's just my thought on. It. So over here on the Wikipedia page, we actually have a bunch of information on the alien penguin named to be determined. 
And obviously the creature has a feather covered body, white on the crest and light blue on the back. This is only for this guy right here, by the way, obviously for, for this creature right here with the concept for the baby and then how it opens its mouth and closes its eye and stuff like that during an attack. Like many creatures on 4546B, it has two pairs of eyes, yellow in color with black pupils. So unlike other creatures, the eyes face different directions. One pair is front mounted and the other pair is side mounted. That's actually kind of weird. Hang on. Oh, I see it. Oh, I've never noticed those were eyes. Oh, I feel so dumb. How did I not know those were eyes? About one third of the creature's height is made up of a huge beak atop its head. This beak opens horizontally rather than vertically and rows of long black spines lie within. The beak is mostly black with a band of green and blue around halfway up. At the base of the beak on either side is a small respiratory orifice. There's actually one right here I haven't seen online yet, which was kind of cool. Uh, this goes into like the actual, I guess, autonomy and how this thing actually functions as a creature. And you can see the foot details right here, retractable ice gripping claws, which is very important. They're obviously down right here in this section. Then you have the foot pads and the claw sheath retracted in swimming mode. So that's like, that's really cool stuff right here. We can see how this thing actually works. There's a tail apparently that retracts on land and extends when swimming. I would assume this is to help with some kind of repulsion means or steering and stuff like that. And then you have a front uh, and rear view of the uh, feet. Um, overall, I love how they constructed this creature and I love how they have practical ap application in mind and how these things would move. It seems like these creatures also have a lot more moving parts, I guess, if that makes sense. They have a lot more personality and a lot more animation, uh, I guess, options than the other creatures in Subnautica. Like, I don't know of many sub or creatures in Subnautica where, like, they actually change form when they're underwater and then, like, if they fly out of the water, for instance. Then none of the creatures really do that. And I don't really see much of that as a theme. So clearly they're putting a lot more work into the creatures for the DLC. And that that's just the telling sign of an aging dev team where they are learning. And as they go, they get better. And since they've gotten to this point where, you know, they are, they are considered industry leaders and professionals in game development with such a massively popular game, clearly that experience is something they're going to flaunt now because other game devs may not know how to do this stuff or they may be just getting into it and since these guys have their foundation and they know how to do stuff well they can do some really interesting stuff now and really go above and beyond with some of the animations and how the creatures will interact in the wild and the ai and a whole host of things let me know what you think down below in the comments section about the alien penguin and all the new stuff on it but now we move into the brute dark and i just want to throw this in here there is a new quote unquote Titan class fish that I'll be moving into in just a moment. So what is the brute shark? The brute shark is a medium sized predatory species that takes design inspiration from rays, tiger fish and sharks. It was designed by Alex Rise. I, I really hope I'm saying your last name right, Alex. If I'm not, you need to tell me. By the way, I think Keemstar likes you. Anyways, the appearance, <laughs> the brute shark has a streamlined body that is mostly gray in color. In place of traditional fins, it has large wings not dissimilar to those of the other rays. The mouth itself is odd in that it appears to be composed of a distinctly different tissue to the rest of the body, somewhat resembling the bony plates on the head of a something fish that I can't pronounce. The mouth has many sharp teeth, seven pairs on the upper mandible and six pairs on the lower. The body is adorned in some areas with bright yellow bands of color on the snout behind each wing and behind each of the eyes. It has a small dorsal fin and pelvic fin, but lacks a tail entirely. And this creature, obviously, I, it, it's, I'm willing to bet this thing is going to be around the size of the bone shark or the stalker. Maybe this is the replacement for the stalker. Like, the question for me is like, if these kinds of creatures can exist and they aren't in the normal Subnautica world that we have right now and these DLC creatures come in. Who's to say there can't be another location on Subnautica where there's entirely different creatures? Like, you, there's a lot to take in with this and I don't think we've actually seen a, a Leviathan class creature per se yet. So the next thing I'm gonna get into is this guy right here, the Titan Holefish. Now there's nothing impressive with this thing right now is that this is actually a really small creature in comparison to the other creature it shares a relationship with. The creature that it shares a relationship with 
is actually the Titan Holefish. So these guys actually share a relationship with the Titan Holefish, and the Titan Holefish has formed a symbiosis with a small aggressive fish species. Their semi-parasitic eggs are laid in a mass in the hole, extracting some nutrition and staying oxygenated. In exchange, the small fish mob any predators and nip off parasites. Now we actually have even more information about this whole fish over on the wiki, but it's confirmed that it is actually related to the whole fish we currently have in Subnautica. This is, I guess you would call this a Titan class creature because of the fact that, you know, it's, it's gigantic compared to its relative. And then the appearance, obviously, and we have this weird image right here. I, I don't, I don't see why that's there. It's a small section of the creature's model. I don't think they've started modeling these creatures yet. I would be surprised if they did. And that kind of looks like a joke to me. I don't, that, that, I, I don't know. I, I, I can't discredit it, but I can't credit it either because I haven't really seen anything about this tiny image of its face. It looks kind of concerning, not gonna lie. The Titan Holefish's body is roughly circular, very flattened and blue in color, darker towards the top and gradually lightening to white towards the bottom. The face proportion of the body is a bright green, featuring two small blue eyes and a small mouth. This green continues down the front of the body until it meets the tail fin. The tail fin is blue in color and very large, being taller than the entire body of the Titan, and also the only fin it possesses. The most defining feature of the Titan whole fish is the hollowed out section of the body that the name is derived from. The hollow is partially filled with a transparent light blue gel that the symbiotes lay their eggs in. The gel serves to transfer nutrition and oxygen to the eggs. And I'm kind of wondering, I'm kind of wondering if, you know, can a human swim through this? It looks like there is a two scale image of a human and then the actual like section of this fish that is just holed out. And it does look like the human can swim through it. I don't know if this nutritious gel or whatever can actually be harvested by a human or if we can do anything with it. I'm assuming we could because it's literally just like nutritious jello, but I don't think I'd be scooping up any anytime soon with a spoon. Now, another creature that was shown is the shard, and this is zero one. So I'm assuming this shard fish, or whatever you want to call it, actually has numerous different types, just like the alien penguin, A, B, C, D, E, F, yada, 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 as many letters as you can get in the alphabet. Now, shard 01, the information is basically this creature travels slowly through the water vertically like a knife, luring prey in with its glowing esca from the seafloor. I, I assume this is the esca, the, the, the actual like thing at the end of its face. It reminds me of an anglerfish, actually. I like that a lot. When attacked, it quickly extrudes hypersaline slime cooled through bio... Mechan what? Biochemical means this rapidly forms an ice shell around its body from which it suddenly swims free, leaving the predator to attack its false ice shadow while it escapes. It's actually really smart. It effectively clones itself in a way and then takes off. Like, that's actually, I like that. But at the same time, that's some really wonky, like, that I don't... <laughs> Can you imagine if a fish could do that in real life? How how crazy that would... That's that's weird. I like that concept a lot, though. That's actually really cool. You guys let me know what you think about that down below in the comment section. That's super... That's super smart. Like, that's... that's Someone... Someone hit something that day, and they came up with a crazy creature. I don't know who it is on the Subnautica dev team that got into the devil's lettuce, but someone did, and it's... Uh, I like what you did. Now, we actually have an image here of the outside of a mega biome within the DLC. Now, what is this mega biome? Well, this mega biome actually has a wiki page that we can visit. It actually goes hand in hand with all of the other Arctic biome stuff we have right now. I don't know where this one would be located. I don't see any like spoilers or like anything fancy inside this image right now. We see a lot of ice. Uh, we can see this area is a little bit dark. There's some stuff under the water here from the reflection or whatever. Uh, it, like overall, I assume this stuff would be harvestable to some degree so we could get something from it. And the 
protagonist here is obviously male. They have confirmed they're going to change this to female. I, I think I actually covered this in my last video as well. Uh, up right here, we see some uh, flying creatures too. It seems like flying creatures have been prevalent in this expansion and like in the teasers a lot more than ever before in Subnautica. And I'm kind of wondering if they're going to be showing us some kind of like... It would make total sense. I think they're going to release something or they're going to reveal a new sky creature or sky-based creature as well. That would make total sense because there's so many land-based creatures right now. Why wouldn't they add a creature that would be in the sky flying around that could be somewhat of a threat? Because right now in Subnautica, we have a couple birds, nothing too fancy. We have a couple birds, nothing too fancy, so on and so forth. So I think that's something the game is missing. I think they would be very smart to add something like that. As far as the squid shark goes, which was a fan favorite, we had one new conceptual art right here shown and teased the size of a diver compared to this thing. This thing is still really big. I remember, like, I assume this is going to be to scale. Uh, in the past, I assumed this thing was going to be a Leviathan class creature, and I don't know if this confirms it or not right here. But if this is the case, this thing is still smaller than a Reaper Leviathan but it's probably more terrifying than a Reaper Leviathan, seeing as it has these giant ass, uh, I guess like face mandibles that will suck you in and destroy you. But if this is to scale, well then this thing isn't the size of a bone shark at all. It's, it, it was actually assumed or said that it would be a small creature. And now it's looking to me, if this is a two scale representation, just like they did with the whole fish or Titan whole fish, that this could actually be two scale. And if that's the case, this thing could actually eat you alive in one bite, just like the Reaper. So take that into account. I don't know if you would, I don't know if you'd classify it as a Leviathan class creature. I don't think you would because I don't think it's big enough. I think a Reaper Leviathan would have a field day with this thing personally. But I don't know, maybe we'll have to do that someday. Maybe we'll spawn a Reaper in and just see what happens. Now there actually is some conceptual art out there that just didn't make the cut, which is kind of sad. And it's actually some really adorable stuff. So I want to start out with this little guy right here. So moving over to Alex Rye's official Twitter page, which I will leave in the comment section of this video or description. Go follow this guy. He does some really, really good artwork. I love this guy's concept art. Actually, there's an image somewhere down here that he had actually shared uh, that I need to debunk right now because people were like, oh my God, it's coming to Subnautica. No, it's not coming to Subnautica. I wish it was. I, I really do wish it was because like the guy did such an amazing job with it but it's not actually coming to the game. Maybe I'm nowhere near it. Uh, let me scroll back up. So this is the information on the pygmy crab squid, which will not be coming to the game as far as I know. A small polar relative of the crab squid, intelligent and small. It has bioelectric abilities like its deep water relative and is drawn to electric devices and batteries humans have brought to the planet. So, I mean, it's it's... I don't know, like it's good and bad. I'm not big on the idea that something could be, you know, lurking in the shadow. So you get out of your sea moth, you know, and you're deep under the cold water. And all of a sudden you look up and your lights go out and what the hell happened? And then you got to try and hunt this guy down. I like, I don't agree with that to an extent, but I also think this thing could have added a lot of character to the creatures within Subnautica. Kind of wish they added it, but it's too bad, I guess. It's, it's whatever. Uh, this is another early design for one of the naughty little weirdos, which I don't know if this is coming to the game still or not. This might still be coming. Not sure. I have a feeling they want to have something that can mess with the player and take the battery charges and stuff. But you can see right here, it looks more like a uh, uh, one of those, uh, what are they called? I can't remember, like the lava eel things, lava leech things, whatever. But the mouth is closed. And then you can see right here, here's another concept of it. And then uh, the skin plates go, yeah, flexible membranes. So that makes sense. It flexes back. These come out. These are still here. This is its mouth, obviously. And then on land, this creature moves by alternating. Oh, God, this thing can go on land, too? No, that's not okay. The tentacles are retractable right here. This is... It moves like... Oh, no, that's not okay. That is... What if you can make it a pet? Oh, my God. Be cute. Kind of not really, actually. Let me know what you think about this thing, guys. I am torn entirely. It looks like it can lick your batteries and steal them from you which is kind of scary can you imagine this thing whips your hand and steals the battery out of your flashlight when you're in a dark zone oh god nope that's that anyways we're gonna move on down to this final creature right here i believe which is another concept of this guy and this is 
confirmed unused creature from the subnautica dlc so yeah you see swimming mode the fins fold down yada yada treasure grabbing with its lower jaws now this is just a iteration to this guy right here obviously right here we can see it's almost the exact same design uh, it just has tentacles instead of the giant body that is solid um, we see obviously too how it takes batteries and grabs quote unquote treasure so i guess it's not just batteries it will grab any kind of treasure uh, that we would see there but there's an image i need to look at right now that is actually tweeted out by this guy uh, let me go down oh that was so cute uh it's actually somewhere down here uh, let me see uh, maybe it's not there anymore oh that's cute I'm trying to find hey, this thing right here. So people were telling me this was actually a confirmed Subnautica creature, but that's not the case. This, this isn't a confirmed Subnautica creature, unfortunately. Um, it's just a commission project that he wanted to do for a client. Uh, so that's basically that. Guys, that is it for now on Subnautica. I hope you enjoyed it. Let me know your thoughts down below in the comments section. As always, I want to hear back from you. I want to know what you think about all of the stuff you have seen in this video. And if you enjoyed it or not, definitely Tell me what you think of the creatures, and I'm sure Subnautica devs will probably see your suggestions and comments as well. That is it. Leave a like if you enjoyed this video, and I will see you in the next video.